welcome to In The Raw. And I'm your friend, your brother, Haji, Dr. Roshan Khan. In The Raw. RK's Guyana Free Media. And I love you too. This is a very special month, ladies and gentlemen. The month in which we celebrate, observe and applaud the original peoples of Guyana. Maybe the original peoples of the entire hemisphere. The same kinds of people were in India. Same kinds of people, or at least partly in India because they had Africans too. Same kinds of people in the Philippines, in China. Mongolia, Korea, ladies and gentlemen, the original peoples, we call them the Amerindians, according to the laws and the acts. But these days they are protesting that they are not owned by any America. They were dispossessed by the British, the Europeans, and in many ways, the Americans, ill-treated, abused, especially in the United States of America. And we know what happened to hundreds of millions of them that were virtually wiped out. Today they re realize in the United States and Canada, and they're apologizing. So they kill the leaders and the peoples out, but they name their, their best and fastest worship, Cherokee, Apache, Sue, and so on. But they kill them all. Like in Niagara Falls, when you go into the shops, you see everything glorifying the original peoples, the indigenous peoples, who are the American, the Amerindians, or the indigenous, all kinds of things that they have been using from time immemorial. But what, what's the situation? And what's the reality? They kill them out. They can't live in those areas anymore. They can't afford to. Like the Niagara Falls. Both sides. Canada and America. But in Guyana, I have to give some credit. That even Forbes Burnham used to look into the interest of the indigenous and the American Indians as they like as. We like to call them Amerindians, American Indians, really. This is their country. They came, the Europeans, and they're mauled, desecrated, raped, molested, chopped their hands and their heads off in their search for gold. And a city of gold, ladies and gentlemen. But we must understand that the Amerindian people were not just ordinary people. They were inventors, creators. How did they get iron to make machete and cutlasses? How did they get iron to make pots? To make their, their casserie? How did they get the intelligence? to create casserie or cassava bread or the big flat we Indians call it tawa or tawa where you cook the flat bread, large huge ones like in Mexico, I didn't mention Mexico, Peru and so on, all those countries, the whole of South America the whole of North America were the indigenous the Americans today like the president, I like to applaud them they're coming along they tried in their basic, best way to show that they're doing something. But the real help came in the time of Dr. Cherry Jagan and Dr. Mara Jagdeer. But more recognition and power is being given to them today by this government of President Dr. Irfan Ali, by this government of Vice President Dr. Mara Jagdeer, by this government of the Prime Minister Brigadier retired Mark Phillips and the entire cabinet, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, brothers and sisters around the world, in the raw. They're getting more benefits. 
It was painful to me when on taking power, the Grange government instantly terminated 2,000 American Indians or the indigenous people that were given jobs to sustain their families and to create economic power. Money circulating within the environments that they live. So much with the work being done, but better yet, the coming through the taxpayers' money to help them to sustain their villages, their livelihoods, to give them a sense of pride and well-being. How did the Atno of President then Arthur Granger expect to win the election when they marginalized the people? When they, when they, they fired 2,000 of them instantaneously, friends and family, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, how could it be possible for them to win? And talking a little bit about the sugar workers, you dispossess Mr. Former President Granger for some things whom I respect you, but you and particularly Nagamutu, and uh, the AFC, the AFC, the AFC, ladies and gentlemen, particularly the AFC led by Ramchatan, the AFC led by Ramchatan, I repeat, the AFC led by Ramchatan and Moses Nagamoto were defending the termination of 7,000 people, which affected about 40,000 lives and whole communities. In the upper quarantine, affected and desecrated and hurt them. People committed suicide. Some women turned to prostitution. This was the reality of the ACNO comprising the major partner, the EF, the major partner, the PNCR, which always have a hit of the sugar workers. But then Ram Jatan, ladies and gentlemen, Ram Jatan, the leader of the AFC. You people in the quarantine, take note, the leader of the AFC, Ram Jatan, and Moses Nagamutu are the ones that terminated the people and made it impossible. Only when it came to election in 2020, President Richard came to say, oh, all those who were terminated will be given lands. Oh, what a pyrrhic victory you're trying to give to the people. Now you will give them lands. You did not consult with them. You had no... No vision, no plan to make them independent or to give them cooperatives. You're talking about cooperatives after when I wrote a letter and the then Minister of Labour, Keith Scott, replied to me. And are they willing to work with, with these people? But then I replied to him, my friend, you know, Keith Scott. Keith, all the best. I know you'll be hearing this and listening to this. Every at that time, you were talking about cooperatives. Why didn't you do it when or just before and prepare the people before you fire them all and caused suicides and depression and prostitution and moral drunkenness? And that is what happened in the indigenous committee, community. You can't get jobs in there. There's very few things you can do to self-subsist. So what they did, they terminated 2,000 people in the interior area that President Dr. Irfan, I beg your pardon, at that time was President Dr. Bara Jagdeo had created to give jobs to these people. Instead of you absorbing them, hugging them, trying to win their hearts, you turn them away. Now let me read, ladies and gentlemen, this article taken from, taken from, I'm not seeing the name where, but it's taken from something, um, President Ali, and I see President Ali like a very um, Roshanic Elvis Presley in the position like a star there. Yeah. That's a Roshanic pose, you know, an Elvis Presley pose. So first time I see him like that, and so I applaud him. You must be happy. Some people want to make mockery. Some people want to tease. Let them eat their heart out, Mr. President. Let them eat their liver. Let them eat their kidneys out. And you stand with your people and enjoy and sing and cook and have fun. Like Jesus Christ said. Like Prophet Muhammad said. Peace and blessings of God be upon them. There will always be poor people. 
They will always be complainants. They will always be bitter people. You do your thing, and those who want to raise the glory, using the opportunity Mr. President and your government is putting in place to raise the glory, then let them raise. Let me start reading this article. I don't know where it came from. As the Amerindian Heritage Month celebrations got underway on Thursday evening with the cultural extravaganza, President Dr. Ferrari has pledged to Ghana's indigenous people that his government will ensure they will be part of and benefit from the country's development. This is his word, and we know. President Dr. Rifar Ali, let me see this man's face. I hope earlier, operator, you showed when I was talking about his singing that you would have showed that photograph with him with that Roshanic Elvis Presley posture. So this man, President Dr. Irfan Ali, is carrying the load and the love for the people of this country to help the Amerindians and the Africans. And when he says that the, uh, the, the indigenous or the African people will be a part of this country's development, th th that is because the Africans are part of this country's development. The Indians are part of this in country's development. The Portuguese are part of this country's development. It's more necessary now to bring in our brothers and sisters from the interior, from the hinterland, who are the true owners of Guyana. Operator, you make sure you continue to show some photographs and videos of uh, the glory of this month and of our um, Amerindian uh, brothers and sisters, friends and family. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is in the raw. Our king's kind of free media. And I'm your friend and host, Haji, Dr. Ocean Khan. I just got a call, so that is why it is in the raw. <laughs> I know a lot of people like that, and I know I also irritate a lot of people. For those I irritate, please take this in the raw. And for those that I admire me and that I love, 99% of the Guyanese population, in the raw. And here we go. Addressing the gathering at the National Stadium, Tarmac, in Providence, East Bank de Marara, the head of state pointed out that all Guyanese are entitled to the same treatment and opportunities. As such, he committed to stand by indigenous people from every community and take them on the pathway to prosperity, telling them that they should celebrate the month with this in mind, that they are on technically the trajectory to greatness. The rocket that will propel the Amerindians that we should respect and love and honor, ladies and gentlemen. They are on the platform of greatness, according to Excellency President Dr. Irfan Ali. Give me Dr. Irfan Ali with that Amerindian piece of headdress and give me some of my beautiful Amerindian boys and girls here singing and dancing in a video if possible or some photograph. And I, go, I, and I continue, celebrate with the confidence that your future is going to be better. Celebrate with the confidence that the opportunities of the future will come to you. Celebrate with the confidence that you will be an equal partner in the development of our country. Celebrate with the confidence that you are a deserving people. Celebrate with the confidence that you are equal to anyone else. Celebrate with the confidence that this government is with you, our our Indian brothers and sisters, our indigenous, our original peoples. I know some people try to take away those two titles, indigenous and original. And we are talking Guyanese context, South American context. And we know others were also the, the, the original of originals, our African brothers and sisters from Africa, the, the ancient, great and historic motherland. The Guyanese leader went on to went on to note uh, that government has a responsibility to create the environment for indigenous people, especially the youth, to prosper. To this end, he narrated. To this end, he reiterated in the raw. 
that it is necessary, including the finances, for those qualified Amerindians who wanted to be trained in a particular field, nursing, teaching, medical technician, and so on, the finances will be made available, including, ladies and gentlemen, setting up of technical schools in the various areas. We will make sure that you get all the opportunities, His Excellency repeated. You have what it takes to be all you can be, and will create the environment to ensure you be all you can be. He posited. Sounds very Roshanic. I've been talking about these things, to be the best you can be, to the best you can be, but this is a man who has read, this is a man with scholarship, this is a man with two PhD, not honorary like me, but worked for, earned degrees in PhD from the University of the West Indies, who has the lingo and the persona, the intellect and style. The president revealed that 60% of the junior teachers trained in the last three months came from the hinterland, and riverine communities across the country amounting to approximately 500. Wow, this is history being created by this government. When we know that the previous government unfortunately made a blunder and terminated 2,000 people of the jobs that was created by the government of the PPPC during the era of Excellency Dr. Barajakdeo. Moreover, in the term of agriculture, President Ali again encouraged the interland communities to produce crops, reassuring that government will assist them with the transportation to get those items to the markets. And that's why they're making more and more boats to get the, to the markets, to the Guyana Marketing Corporation, to the Ministry of Agriculture, to spread them out around the country. So produce, we are going to get the produce. So produce, we are going to get the produce out to the markets. For you, he implored, to further empower indigenous people, the head of state went on to outline the other initiatives the government has undertaken, such as the hinterland housing program. Across the country, not only for the indigenous and the but across the country, ladies and gentlemen, yet still he's getting cussed by the same people he's trying to help. The president is still getting cussed. What an ungrateful set of people we could be of various ethnicities. Only last week, during a trip to Region 9, Upper Takatu, President Ali announced a series of measures to push home ownership in the hinterland communities. This includes a $1 million grant to some 600 land title holders so they can start construction on their homes. Added to this, government has also partnered with two commercial banks to produce low-cost $2 million loans to each of these uh, persons to supplement the construction cost, since a typical house in the region ranks to about $3 million to build. To further assist uh, with village economies, government also be procuring some $2 million building blocks. Imagine that. Imagine the brains of this man and this government creating employment and business opportunities. Building blocks from Region 9 communities, at least one village, Shurinab in South Central Rupununi, will be getting $10 million to supply 300,000 clay bricks to be used in the region's housing program. Clay bricks are by far better than what we call the hollow block. Clay bricks, ladies and gentlemen, is a good idea. It was a great initiative by Lyndon Folk Samson Burner. But our people were not ready at time. So I have to give Lyndon Folk Samson Burner, let me see his photograph here, please, an applause, for he created the clay brick factories, which could not have supplied properly because people were not fully in it. He built roads and dams with them, in good for acting in the east coast of Demerara. There. Where I lived, there is still a clay brick road. So I want to give Forbes Burnham an applause as a man of fairness and justice. According to President Ali on Thursday, the best investment program can come is in its people. 
On the, on the note, he underscored the importance of empowering individual persons, especially young people. He explained that transformation is not only seen in physical infrastructure, but also in individual development. The guy and his leaders stated that by transforming individuals, then collectively they will transform their communities and ultimately the country. What? Why must I not just love this president? His vision, his wisdom, his thoughts. What we have is unique. What have what we have cannot be taken away. What we have can only be celebrated and shared. Because what we have is a united people and a united culture, he pointed out. But one set of people, a few of them, a fringe element being used by certain fringe failures as David Hines, Rick Ford Bork, the other one in the basement in, the, in New York, and these haters trying to spread and create trouble amongst a beautiful people, a one united Guyana where we must live good, but they're playing their dirty, stink, nasty politics and sad to say. The man who bankrupted, as I read in the media, the bankrupted the PNCR with too much of court cases and what's not and poor management and personality style. The leader of the People's National Congress, it is said, that uh, now under his uh, direction and his leadership, the PNCR is a bankrupted institution. So these guys are not concentrating on the development of Guyana or to try to do things in a manner to make the government feel comfortable so we can partner with them, so we can have a shared governance. How can you have a shared governance and a power sharing with a people who is determined to destroy the nation and the people and the country and some who also call for violence against another set of people, as we have seen recently in Monrepo and not so long ago in 2020 in Region 5. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, your brother, brothers and sisters, this is truly a long article, the year's heritage month being held under the theme, celebrating our tra tra traditional culture, while building one guy and according to our marine affairs, Minister Pauline Sakai, the team, this team is appropriate. Pointing out the importance of the indigenous culture, she noted that it's personal, unique, and sacred. Brilliant lady, in the same breath, the minister said that the rich culture, this rich culture is slowly fading away. True. Work on it, minister. The president is working to keep your people intact. Too many people have been penetrating your place, stealing your pretty girls, bringing them into dirty work and business turning them into alcoholics and, 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 and robbing and cheating your men and taking them to do gold mining and so on. You need a special protection arena or grouping of laws or clauses that will protect these guys, these youths from being exploited. But I know in Guyana we have freedom of choice. If you're an adult and they want to go to the rum shops and to the brothels and be used by people who don't respect them, then they technically have a choice. Many go into the interior and work and are used and abused and their lives destroyed. Many youths, many boys, and they kept in, in debt forever, so they cannot leave. In fact, Minister Sukai said that Guyana is the only country that has a government supporting a month filled activities aimed at celebrating and promoting indigenous traditional knowledge and culture only in Guyana, ladies and gentlemen. Not Trinidad, not Barbados, not the United States of America, not the whole of South America where they have huge populations of indigenous. None celebrates for a month and observe with knowledge and um, education and revelry and joy and goodwill. But it's actively seeking, working to celebrate and and preserve our culture, we have uh, to each to our part. He's talking to his, her people. Indigenous leaders, elders and youths have a specific role to play. And we must take our roles seriously. Proactive steps must be taken to not only celebrate and promote uh, our culture, but to keep it alive to transmit it to the next generation, to enhance and embrace it and ensure we have pride in our identity, the Amerindian Affairs Minister stated. 
Similar sentiments were echoed by Chairman of the National Toshaw's Council, MTC Derek Chon, who urged that at no time must indigenous people forsake their heritage. Instead, he implored they must preserve it for future generations. He added that this requires renewed efforts to work on uh, passing down various indigenous traditions to generations. Amerindian, Village, Amerindian Heritage Month is observed in September annually. However, this year's celebration and so in the raw I lost a piece, the closing part here. Yes, it is celebrated in the raw in September annually. However, this year's celebration have returned after a three-year hiatus caused by the novel coronavirus 19, COVID-19 pandemic. But we are now back full swing. Applause to His Excellency the President. Applause to Barajak dear. Applause to Prime Minister Mark Phillips. Applause to Pauline Sukai. God bless you all, and people of Guyana, let us work, all of us together. Don't be carried, carried away with the Burks, who are bitter and hiding, and the other one who is hopping from there to here, and causing friction and hate and want their piece of the pie, as if he has no pie. He needs a pie, probably in the eye, so he can see it well, the pie that he has. Friends and family, your brother. Your friend, me, Raji, Dr. Roshik, in the raw. Say thank you. Farewell, friend.